Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation When to Take Social Security Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance In prior presentations we've been focusing in on retirement planning In prior sections we've talked about investment goals, strategies, tools Now honing them down to the specific goal of retirement planning Quick recap of the typical types of sources of incomes you might have in retirement, which could include employer pension plans, which might include the 401k plan in our list. We've talked about in prior presentations. We've got the public pension plans, which we could include the 403b plan here. We can compare the public pension plans to the employer pension plans, similar except working for the public sector, working for the government, for example. We're also going to include in this section the benefit programs government benefit programs like the big one we're talking about here social security you might include other benefit programs such as medicare and medicaid but we're going to be thinking about social security here you got the personal retirement which may include iras or other types of savings that we have specifically for retirement and annuities a specific kind of vehicle we might get into a little bit more for retirement planning focusing here we're looking at information primarily from investopedia when to take social security the complete guide which you could find online take a look at the references resources continue your research from there this by amy fontanier updated april 25th 2022 as we think about social security you can think about the two ends of social security usually we're thinking about when we're putting money into the social security for taxes and then what we're focused in on here the benefits when we're getting the money back from social security that's what we're focused in on that time there is some relationship between the two because the amount of money we'll get back will be dependent in part on how much we put into the system and when we decide to start taking the money uh, when our retirement age will be, which is our main focus at this point. Also remember that if you're further and further away from the retirement uh, age, then you want to be more and more skeptical of using it as your major planning for retirement because the laws could change going forward if you're close to retirement then you would expect that they're not going to pull the rug out from under you if you're further away from retirement i would be much more skeptical to be dependent upon the social security if you have it great uh, if it's not there you'd like to be able to set up a plan so that you'd still be okay hopefully okay so here we go uh when to take social security the complete guide so clearly the question would be should i take the social security as soon as possible i might get longer amounts of payments then but the amount that i get might be shorter or lesser so the question would be uh, what would be the best maximizing strategy to maximize my social security earnings. So if you're about to retire, you may be wondering whether you should start claiming your hard earned social security benefits now. Here are a few key factors to consider in making that decision. When can I start collecting social security? Now the age is one of the things that they're extending from time as time passes and we would expect them to continue to increase the age as people live longer and as they try to, to try to afford the payouts for the social security as time passes. So the minimum age to claim benefits is 62. If you are turning 62 and need to in, need the income from social security to support yourself, then you can start claiming your benefits now. However, if you have enough other income to keep you going until you're older, you may want to delay increase in the size of your monthly benefits so the basic idea would be if you if you take the money earlier then that's great because you'll get the money earlier and you'll start getting the payments earlier but you might have a decreased amount of payment that you're going to get and then if you if you could wait then it could be more beneficial to wait and get the larger or full amount of the payment uh, by claiming it at the full retirement age so what is full retirement age sometimes called fra the size of your uh, monthly social security benefit depends on a few factors including how much you earned over the years the year you were born and the age when you started claiming down to the month so these are the factors to uh, get involved here with how much you're going to calculate for the benefits that you will have the earnings years how much earnings did you were subject to social security meaning how much did you pay into the system and then uh, what's the year that you can retire given when you're retiring and, and the law that's going to be applied there and are you going to take the money earlier or wait till you hit the full retirement age so you'll receive your full benefit if you start claiming 
when you reach what Social Security considers your full retirement age, the FRA. So that's when you get the full benefit retirement age. If you go earlier than that, you might have a lesser amount. Sometimes also referred to as normal retirement age, FRA was 65 for Social Security began, but it has been raised to 67 for anyone born in 1960 or later. So we would expect maybe they're going to keep on increasing this full retirement age in order to deal with the fact that we can't afford this whole thing. In any case, to find your FRA, see the chart below. So that you got the year of birth, we got the 1937 uh, or earlier 65, 1938, 65 and two months, 1939, 65 and four months, 1940, 65 and six months, 1941, 65 and eight months, and 1942, 65 and 10 months, 1943 to 1954, 66, 1955, 66 and two months, 1956, 66 and four months, down to 1960, which would be at 67 at that point, that would be 1960 or later at this time. So how to calculate social security benefits. Let's say your FRI, FRA is 66. If you start claiming benefits at age 66 and your full monthly benefit is $2,000, when you'll get $2,000 per month. So if you start claiming benefits at age 62, which is 48 months early, then your benefit will be reduced to 75% of your full monthly benefit, also called your quote, primary insurance amount, end quote. In other words, you'll get 25% less per month and your check will be 1,500. So obviously you'll get a lesser amount and that lesser amount could stick uh, even after you hit the full retirement age, usually, but you'll get it for a longer period of time, right? So you've got to kind of weigh the pros and cons you could take into consider life and expectancy and so on. You know, if you're if you're going to die fairly soon, you, that you think you might benefit or you might get more money, you know, earlier. If you're going to live uh, a good while going forward, then then the two thousand dollars, you know, how long would you could calculate the break even point, right? How long would you have to live be t before the two thousand dollars higher amount uh, would recap? the the uh, early payments that you would be receiving right you can calculate when that break even point would be so to reduce benefit i uh, won't increase once you reach age 66 rather you'll continue to receive it for the rest of your life it may go up over time due to cost of living adjustments colas but only slightly so once again that reduced benefit won't increase once you reach age 66 so you might say well if i get the early benefits of 1,500, then maybe when I get full retirement age, they'll increase it to the full amount of 2,000. No, that's not the case because again, you got you got the benefit of getting paid 1,500 for the, that time frame, and that's going to make up for the fact that you're going to get a lesser amount, you know, going forward from that point in time. So again, you can kind of calculate what the break even will be. It may still increase, but due to the inflation adjustments, meaning normal inflation adjustments due to the to to the time value of money could increase it but they're not increasing it to the 2000 if you would have waited for the full retirement so you can do the math for your own situation using social security administration sse early or late retirement calculator so they got tools on the website to help you to punch in these numbers and do the calculations. One of a number of benefit calculators provided by the SSA, they can also help you determine your FRA, the SSA's estimate of your life expectancy and benefit calculations, rough estimates of your retirement benefits, individualized projections of your benefit based on your personal uh, work record and more. So you can use a lot of those tools online. You might wanna use those tools online to kind of supplement your own worksheet that we talked about in a prior presentation on how you can kind of put these calculations together because that can help you to do what if scenarios. If you could put the stuff in like Excel, for example, then you can do scenarios and say, okay, well, what if I waited, uh, you know, more, a little bit more time or what if I worked more, what would that have an impact on my full retirement age calculations and so on and so forth. And again, clearly your life expectancy is, is one of the things you'd want to kind of consider uh, in terms of taking early early benefits versus waiting till the retirement age 
and and so there we got that that's another factor so what happens if you claim after your fra full retirement age if you wait until you're age 70 to start claiming benefits then you'll get an extra eight percent per year or in total 132 percent of your primary insurance amount 2640 per month in the example above for the rest of your life claiming after you turn 70 does uh, doesn't increase your benefits further so there's no reason to wait longer than that the longer you can afford to wait after age 62 up to 70 the larger your monthly benefit will be nevertheless delaying benefits doesn't necessarily mean you'll come out ahead overall so the goal clearly is not simply to get the largest amount of payments that you're going to be receiving because to do so you're delaying the payments into the future so clearly if you wait until you get the maximum amount at 70 and then you die at 72 then you're not going to be increasing your benefits but if you maximize the amount at 70 and then you live to be 120 then it's likely that those higher benefits might outweigh the fact that you waited longer before getting the benefits which again you can kind of calculate using a break-even type of calculation to figure those kind of estimates which will be dependent in part on your life expectancy other factors should be considered including your expected longevity and whether you or your spouse plan to file for special benefits it always kind of makes me laugh when I feel like what, what happens when they when they figure out the key that everybody's gonna live another hundred years or something like that our, our social security program is gonna be is gonna die because any case doesn't matter so you should also consider the tax investment opportunity and health coverage implications your likely longevity so much of our strategy on maximizing social security retirement benefits depends on guesses as to how long we'll live of course any of us could die in an accident or get a dire diagnosis next week but putting aside these unpredictable possibilities how long do you think you'll live how are your blood pressure cholesterol weight and other health markers how long have your parents and other relatives lived so you can use actuarial tables to get an average of how long people will live but clearly you can get a kind of a more personalized idea of your individual circumstances as well so if you foresee an above average life expectancy for yourself of course i'm living to be 240 then you may come out ahead by by waiting to claim benefits if not uh, then you may want to claim your benefits as soon as you're eligible to make an educated guess about when to claim try doing a breakdown analysis the analysis can tell you when the total benefits you would receive by waiting will begin to exceed the total you would uh, receive by taking benefits earlier so in other words usually the idea the, the decision would be should i take the early benefits or wait till full retirement age although you can go from full retirement to a later time as well but if you think about that process then you got to think well how long how what would my life expectancy have to be before waiting until full retirement age would be beneficial meaning you would think i would have to live longer for waiting to the full retirement age to be beneficial where's the break-even point and then if you think you're going to clear that in terms of your living capacity then you would think it might be worthwhile from a total dollar standpoint to to wait it out and get the higher payment so if for example you get one thousand five hundred dollars a month starting at age 62 or two thousand dollars a month starting at age 66 then you will receive you will have received roughly the same amount in total benefits by age 77 or so at that point the higher monthly benefits that you'd get as a result of waiting will begin to pay off so we're, she's saying that at, so if you compare these two by the time you eat you get to 77 then i believe she's saying that the, that the benefits that you got from the early payment of the 1500 will then be outweighed by the higher payments if you would have waited to the later time to 66 and then any amount of life past 77 then it would be more beneficial to have the higher benefits so if you think that you're going to clear 77 fairly easily 
you would expect then if you could wait then it might be worthwhile from a total dollar standpoint to wait if you're going to die significantly before 77 uh, you know then you would think maybe you want the money now <laughs> the social security website will tell you that regardless of when you start claiming your lifetime benefits will be similar if you live as long as the average retiree the problem is that not everyone will have an average life expectancy hence all the different claiming strategies so if you look at something on average that's great but the average isn't representative of one individual person who could be outside the, clearly could be outside the average by a significant margin so claiming spousal benefits because of the program's spousal benefits being married can further complicate the decision of when to take social security so now you've got the benefits how can you split the benefits between the two individuals remember traditionally we had a situation where you had a one income household and still it's still a case where you, you're going to have one person if you have kids that is going to probably going to be sacrificing some work time for the kids and therefore paying less into the social security and you don't want them to not be benefiting from the social security program because of course they're caring for the kids is what allowed the other person to do uh, the work and so on so how do you how do you deal with the social security for a spousal kind of situation so some divorced spouses are also entitled to benefits based on their ex-spouse's work record spouses who don't qualify for their own social security spouses who don't work at a paid job or or don't earn enough credits to qualify for social security on their own are eligible to receive benefits starting at age 62 based on their spouse's record as with claiming benefits on your own record your spousal benefit will be reduced if you take it before reaching your fra the highest spousal benefit that you can receive is half of your benefit that your spouse is entitled to at their fra while spouses get a lower benefit uh, if they claim before reaching their own fra full retirement age they will not get a larger spousal benefit by waiting to claim after their fra say age 70. So that higher waiting longer than your full retirement age situation thing there might not be beneficial in that case. However, a non-working or lower earning spouse may get a larger spousal benefit if the working spouse has some late career high earning years that boost their benefits. So when a spouse dies, when one spouse dies, the surviving spouse is entitled to receive the higher of their own benefit or their deceased spouse's benefit. So now you got, okay, You've got the other spouse maybe didn't work as much because maybe they were taking care of the kids. If the, if the one that was a higher wage earner died, then you would think it'd be reasonable that they should get access to possibly the higher benefits given the fact that, given that situation. So that's why financial planners often advise the higher earning spouse to delay claiming. If the higher earning spouse dies first, then the surviving lower earning spouse will receive a larger social security check for life and the higher earning obviously is probably going to die first because that's no that's how that's just how it any case when the surviving spouse hasn't reached their fra full retirement age they will be entitled to prorated amounts starting at age 60. once at their fra full retirement age the surviving spouse is entitled to 100 percent of the deceased spouse's benefit on their own benefit which or their own benefit whichever is higher so no more quote file and sus uh, suspend end quote note that the claiming strategy called quote file and suspend end quote which allowed married couples who have reached their fra full retirement age to receive spousal benefits and delayed retirement credits at the same time ended as of may 1st 2016 so if you have that in your mind uh, you got to refresh your mind because the laws change however spouses born before january 2nd 1954 who have attained their fra full retirement age may still be able to file a restricted application it allows them to claim spousal benefits while delaying their own benefits up to age 70. taxes on your benefits your social security benefits may be partially taxable if your combined income exceeds certain thresholds. We might dive into this in a bit more detail later, but then the question is, if I get a benefit, is that income tax? Uh, and obviously from a tax standpoint, the IRS usually says everything's taxed unless we say it's otherwise, but this is kind of like a benefit program. So then the, it's taxed based on your income level and you have 
threshold, so we might get into later more. But in any case, regardless of how much you make, the first 15% of your benefits are not taxed. So the SSA Social Security Administration defines combined income using this formula. Your adjusted gross income, that's kind of like your basically your your how much you earned minus you know the adjustments, the above the line deductions or schedule one deductions, plus non-taxable interest, for example, municipal bonds interest, plus half of your social security benefits, your combined income. So if you file your federal tax returns as an individual and your combined income is $25,000 to $34,000, then you may have to pay income tax of up to 50% of your benefits. If your combined income is more than $34,000, you may have to pay tax on up to 85% of your benefits. If you're married filing a joint return and your combined income is $32,000 to $44,000, then you may have to pay income tax on up to 50% of your benefits. If your combined income is more than $44,000, you may have to pay tax on up to 85% of your benefits. An example of tax benefits. Let's take a look at an example then. Let's say you receive the maximum Social Security benefit for a worker retiring at FRH, full retirement age in 2021, $3,148 per month. Your spouse receives half as much or $1,574 a month. Together, you receive $4,722 a month or $56,664 per year. Half of that, or $28,332, counts towards your combined income for determining whether you have to pay tax on part of your Social Security benefits. Let's, let's further assume that you don't have any non-taxable interest, wages, or other income except for your traditional individual retirement accounts, IRAs, required minimum distribution. So you got to take money out of your IRA of $10,000 for the year. So that's taxable generally. So your combined income would be $38,332, half of your Social Security income, plus your IRA distribution, which would, would make up uh, to 50% of your Social Security benefits taxable because you've exceeded the $32,000 threshold. See, it's very simple. It's very simple. Now, you may be thinking 50% of 56,664 is 28,332, and I'm in the 12% tax bracket, so the tax on my Social Security benefits will be $3,399 dollars and 84 cents. Fortunately, the calculation takes other factors into account and your tax would, would be a mere $225. You can read all about the taxation of Social Security benefits in the Internal Revenue IRS publication 915. So, uh, you know, it can get it can get a little bit complex is the is the general idea. But as your income goes up, more likely you're going to get taxed. And I believe the cap of the amount that would be taxed was at that 80 85 percent as your as your income that's kind of the general idea and you can dive into the weeds to see how that how the threshold uh goes up and you can take a look at that publication to do so tax considerations for social security benefits how do these tax considerations affect when you should apply for social security benefits at today's marginal tax rates they may not have much of an impact on most people still tax rates and income thresholds can change so it's worth remembering that you will lose less of your social security to taxes if you are in a lower marginal tax bracket when you begin to collect so in other words when you're trying to think about when should i re start collecting money earlier or later I, if you're still having significant money from other sources then you're going to have a higher tax bracket typically because we have a higher progressive tax system which may mean that more of your social security money is subject to taxes and possibly subject to the higher marginal tax rates so uh, if you have lesser income maybe if you're thinking that later on at full retirement age you're going to have less taxable income then how significant would that be in terms of how much you're going to pay social security tax on would be a question you might consider. You should also note that if you decide to return to work, even part time, and aren't yet at your FRA full retirement age, your Social Security benefits may be temporarily reduced. So if you're not at the full retirement age and you take the early distribution and then you work, it may have an impact on the amount that you get. 
So the, re uh, the reduction is $1 for every $2 of earned income over $18,960 in 2021 and $19,560 in 2022. During the year when you reach your FRA for retirement age, your benefits will be reduced by $1 for every $3 in income over $50,520 in 2021, $51,960 in 2022 until the month when you become fully eligible. So that money isn't lost. However, the SSA will credit it to your record when you reach your FRA resulting in a higher benefit. So investing your benefits. So are you a, a dis disciplined, savvy investor who thinks you could earn more by claiming early investing your benefits than claiming later and receiving Social Security's guaranteed higher benefits? So you might be thinking, hey, there's a time value of money factor here. If I get the money sooner and I don't need to spend it, maybe I can get the money and, and I, can, I can invest it and then I can earn a return on it because I'm, a, I'm an investor, man, and I can put it on the stock market or something and get a higher return. The, and that might skew our calculation for like that break even point as to taking the money early or waiting until the full retirement age. So then you may want to claim early instead of waiting until age 70. However, it's important to remember that investors have risks and you may lose a portion or all of your invested money. Even the savviest investors can't predict how their investments will perform, especially in the short term. If you claim early, invest in the stock market and average an 8% annual return, which is far from guaranteed, then you almost certainly will come out ahead compared with, with claiming late according to an analysis uh, by Dan uh, Kulplinger, Director of Investment Planning for The Motley Fool. So however, uh, if your returns are lower, if you receive reduced Social Security benefits because you continue working past age 62, if you have to pay taxes on your Social Security income, or if you have a spouse who would benefit from claiming Social Security benefits based on your record, then another a Kulplinger analysis suggests that all bets are off. So timing and your health coverage. So your health insurance coverage can also play a role in deciding when to claim social security benefits. Uh, uh, do you have a health savings account? That's an HSA to which you would like to keep contributing. So if so, Note that if you're age 65 or older, then receiving Social Security benefits requires you to sign up for Medicare Part A. And once you sign up for Medicare Part A, you'll no longer be allowed to add funds to your HSA. So if you have an HSA, that might throw a little wrinkle in your calculations in terms of when you should start to take the money. The SSA also cautions that even if you delay receiving Social Security benefits until age uh, until after age 65, you might still need to apply for Medicare benefits within the three months of turning 65 to avoid paying higher premiums for life uh, for life for Medicare Part B and Part D. In 2022, the average monthly premium for Part D will be $33 per month versus $31.47 in 2021. If you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, the average monthly premium will be $19 per month in 2022 versus $21.22 in 2021. However, if you are still receiving health insurance from your or your spouse's employer, you might not yet have to enroll in Medicare. So we, we've talked about Medicare in its own kind of section and Medicare and Medicaid in prior sections. In any case, the bottom line, you don't have to take Social Security just because you're retired. If you can, leave, if you can live without the income until age 70, then you will ensure the maximum payment for yourself and lock in the maximum spousal benefit. Just be sure you have enough other income to keep you going and your health and good enough that you are likely to benefit from the wait. When you're ready, you can apply for benefits online, by phone, or at your Social Security office.